if there is one thing that I truly hate, then it's filming videos inside of my house. But I'm forced to do so since it is currently winter. And outside we don't have the, the pretty daylight anymore that I use to make my videos. Best footages of moths that I have are outside and not inside of a bedroom. So I'm really hoping winter will disappear as soon as possible. However, let's get to the point, okay? So this cutie here just hatched. It's a beautiful moth. Um, its wings are are green, which is something that I immediately like because I really like moths that have green camouflage. And it has beautiful yellow hind wings. Um, it's a very common species in the warm areas of Europe, of Australia and parts of Africa. It's called the Ophiusa tirhaka. And this um, beauty will lay eggs on plants like eucalyptus, uh, pistachio, as in the actual nut, pistachio, um, smoke tree, Cotinus cochigia. Let's see what else. Some types of cherry, prunus, and I believe there are many more. Uh, one of them is also sumac or rus. So I've been told it's an easy species to breed, but I don't know. I haven't tried. This is my first adult that ever hatched. Uh, this is the first time I'm seeing this species, and I have to say, wow, it's re it's really beautiful. Um, if you are a long time uh, subscriber of my channel. You will notice that I have not tried to breed many Arabidae moths before. And until this year, I didn't have much success with them. But recently uh, I was breeding the Tios you know. You may remember that video. And I found them so fascinating and beautiful that I thought, hey, why don't I breed more species like these, you know? Why not? It's a waste to ignore them. I mean, I love all kinds of moths, so... The more families I can breed, the happier I am. And for next year I already ordered some underwing eggs of uh, Katokala species, so that's gonna be good. So but let's focus on this cutie here. Um, so if you're in Europe or Australia or Africa, you may have seen it before. And it's said to be easy to breed. If you feed the adults well, give them some fruit, they're attracted to rotting fruits. And they will come to the sugary fermenting uh, liquid. And they are said to lay eggs and pair in captivity pretty easy, which I hope is true. The caterpillars can be raised uh, if you give them a lot of ventilation, this is important. And they don't have to be warm, but they like it. So it's preferable, It's l but not required. And it's a very busy little thing, as you can see. It's, uh, oh yes, I was hoping to put it in my hand like this. Really nice. And uh, I also want to say sorry if I don't upload many things soon. I'm making new videos for all of you. But um, because I'm leaving to Cambodia in two months, I stopped ordering uh, eggs and cocoons of insects. That's because when I leave my country, my parents will have to care for all my animals. And I don't really want to, you know, uh, I don't really want to uh, make them put up with like 40 species of caterpillars. That's not fair to them. Uh, they probably wouldn't be able to keep them alive because, well, they don't have any experience. So... A lot of my new videos will be about me talking, really, about various subjects. I've made the new Entomophagy videos and a YouTube series, uh, a Drawer of the Week YouTube series. And I'm making all of these things because, well, they're, they're also filler. Maybe they're a variety that some of you will like. But they are also much needed filler because I don't have anything else to upload right now. I'm, a, I'm at a historical low point for moths, you know. I used to have so many and currently 
I mean, I'm I'm used to having a new moth hatch in captivity every day of my life, and now it's been uh, been weeks. I think the last one I uploaded it on YouTube. It may have been the Chorimbrasia or the Nudaurelia thingy, which was a while ago, sadly. Anyway, thanks for watching. At least I have these guys to entertain me in winter. And see you until next video.